and battle down there. Monacy, he would love to get a kill to open things off as JKS is peppering away towards the T-stairs. Here come on, Monacy spring to life and through the smoke. There it is. As Doss say, dead through the back of the head and the headshots are going to keep coming. The disrespect out the gate, Henry. We saw FaZe attempt this, if you remember, pushing down towards middle, trying to disrespect their opponents. Didn't work out for them too well, but it's actually working out very nicely for G2. I say that with baited breath. Okay. As we are seeing headshots galore here towards a banana. Rock and sock and counter strike here, but Hunter will come out on top. He will manage to get three kills in total. A little bit bumpy towards the end, but a clean round, I suppose. All things considered. I think Sedoto thought he was playing Quake there. Tried to rocket jump with the with the HE grenade. <laughs> that was uh, a little curious maneuver, but the conversion. And I suppose a lot of this is going to be about recalling what happened against FaZe because we expect more of the same here today, unfortunately, for, for the win. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not. It's it's never the, the easiest of times. Well, it's, it's, well, it's, JK, it's just started. Happening. Just started, Justin. What happened? Yeah, let's not let's not lose our head within the first round. We just, we just got underway. Yeah. Did he die about a kill? That yeah, one happened. Yeah, so. He's not happy about it, but... but uh, how did he die? Where did he die from? All of the question marks. Yeah, That's absolutely. So, the, uh, the key to this. Chad, we don't have much to speak about this round. This is the full eco, and it's going to be a straight-up mid-rush. Just padding the stats here, and uh, there'll be one kill. So, you got three kills now. Let's see what the reaction is. Yeah, back to JKS can please. Go on. Well, I'm sure he enjoyed it. I'm sure he enjoyed that one. I don't think he would have smiled. Not yet. No, I think no, he, no. he knows he's just right. Got the confidence frags out of the way now. Now I'm going to start sinking my teeth into some AK players. Uh, I'll have a look at the replay. Uh, as you can imagine, I think most of us could make this one happen. Just Glocks and no armor running up towards middle. Mow them down. Get the round out of the way. They get a kill. Uh, but it uh, doesn't really matter too much. MP9s and the FAMAS up against Galil's and AKs here. So pretty equal in terms of the firepower. We'll see if G2 wants to start an aggressive sound towards Banana, perhaps. And indeed, Hooksy forcing the issue. Lovely play here. Segregating the team towards a long position. Can't get the double kill, but the nade follow-up will give them the man advantage here, Chad. It's going to be a jill. Trying to fight back, but I dare say they are out of luck. He might just have to let this one go. Yeah, funny that uh, when they run up Banana against FaZe, they were actually getting a bit of space. They were, actually. Uh, so this time round, they've just been stifled immediately here, so... It really, sets the tone, mm. doesn't it? Like, on these sort of bonus rounds, I suppose, not quite, but uh, the fact they've got MP9s up against AKs really sets the tone. We're going to be controlling Banana here, sure. even with the lesser weaponry. It's uh, just uh, put some doubt into the minds of the FTW players, but uh, for now, still in a winnable scenario. Four versus three, but they have got those aforementioned AK-47s. A duel down to 57 points of health, and in terms of the formation of the squad, one player towards Boiler and a couple waiting towards the bottom of Banana here. Time is of the essence, though. Haven't got any real map control, and uh, we are at the 50-second mark as we will explore the options towards middle. If everyone takes a look at the radar right now, Nico can even drop back in B. There's another smoke exactly, that's been left yeah. for him, so they, they can lock that out even more. So JKS still top mid here, clamped on him with Monacy. The Wombo combo of this is going to work two consecutive rounds in a row. JKS will get another two kills, and Stadodo Stadar struck. I mean, yes, nice shot. Yeah, yeah. Stadash. Well, I, I called him Stado Bro yesterday. That was great. Pokemon Evolution. That was, your, that was some of your best work. That's a sure. fantastic shot right there, actually. He might be on for some of his yeah. best work he'll, right now. He'll Bomb get himself a smoke as well, remember? He'll take this. Dang. Oh, he didn't no, see it. Never mind. But uh, still, he's got a bump plan. Let's and, see if he uh, can win this. There is a chance. Where does Stado Bro go from here? Who knows? Chad, we'll see. He actually goes towards Ruins for now, and with 100 HP, I dare say he could make something of this. The kill towards Hunter. He's got the information. He's got the advantage. And now the reposition comes through. But the double stack in the CTs. Oh, they slowly line up from. Look at the damage done. Monacy down to one point of health. JKS a 50. There was a world where that did fall apart. But either way, collecting the AK-47s. It is going to be a 3-0. And uh, in terms of lost bonus, we'll be getting $2,900 on top of 800 here. So there is... More potential for Galels. Where's Monacy going? He's running on the other side of the map right now. Have you been tasked with picking something up? JKS was delaying the defuse. Is there a Hit purpose for this? I'm not sure. Either way, uh, this is how the round started and basically how the round ended with this banana control here because it was very unlikely that FTW were getting back into a round like this, especially with the step out mow down from the short side. Yeah, no smokes to speak of there to try and get up towards middle. Maybe Banana would have been the better point of approach, but uh, there we have it. Now, I want to kind of uh, give the desk, Kassad, Yanko, and maybe Trace a couple more questions to Prod and Poke with uh, once they do get into the segment after this. They had a whole lot of conversation about Hooksy, right? Uh, but I, I would love a bit of a conversation about Monacy because sure. so far in the group stage, hasn't really been finding a lot of traction. And if you want to be a top tier team, the recipe at the moment is having two strong riflers and uh, a pretty good AWPA, right? You definitely need to have that fourth string rifler in the mix as well, right? You use that I, I phase recipe. I've heard so recipe. much about him the last year, Chad. Obviously, I've seen him play in the different tournaments, but since I've been back and the games I have watched in the last couple of weeks, like, 
I don't know, been pretty underwhelming he so far. He hasn't gotten going yet. I no, think that's not fair in this to tournament say. at least. Yeah, I'm going to uh, blow my trumpet and name drop here. I was playing a couple of face against with him and JKS, and I'm watching him like firsthand in POVIs because yeah. I'm dead every round or throwing flushes, one of the two. And I was like, yeah, okay, like this this kid is very, very the real skilled. Deal. But we, we haven't had an opportunity to see him pop off yet. Maybe this would be the game for him well, to do to exactly there's that. There's been some labored games with G2. Sure, they haven't dropped a map yet, but it doesn't feel like they've been clean wins. There's True. been lots of scrappy scenarios where things falling apart for them, difficult rounds, lots of uh, economic crisis is going on, but still, um, yeah, I'd like to see a lot more. He has got the AWP here. He'll be holding towards quad with JKS in the pit. And uh, for now, quite a lot of damage inflicted to the FDW side. A partial buy from them. Tech Nines and Deagles. Aras Dosse with the AK-47. They do have two smokes, two flashes, a banana execute. Throw the smoke towards the coffin. CT spawn, flash over. If you get an opening kill and a bomb planted, you have a chance in the retake here. But Nico and Hooksy, We'll see what they, they can make of this. As the flashbangs are slow to come through, but the damage coming in from Nico actually doesn't get the initial frag. This is down to Hooksy now. Pressure on his side as he faces from the new boxes. Needs to find at least one kill here. Stay alive. Wait for the backup. Just delay them. And Nico now starting to punish through the smoke. Should be a foregone conclusion there. I would say Nico to close things out. Oh. It's the USP out, but it's the Sorry, Tech what? 9 the best of them. Two versus one. He'll be able to recover a rifle. And now we are on. A chance here for a Jill. That happened for absolutely nowhere, didn't it? Doesn't have time to reload. Just going to stick with this Tech 9 that's really treated him well. You saw him given the rundown of FTW and who they are. Well, he's about to show us who he is, Agile, Ooh. right now. With the AWP on the retake as well, things could get a bit spicier than you would expect. There it is. That missed shot comes through, and he takes down Monacy, but JKS will recover it. So that's the sort of scrappy rounds I was talking about. Even though they haven't dropped a map in the tournament, there's been lots of these sort of scenarios where it looks like it's under lock and key, then everything crumbles very quickly. But they got three kills between the B defense there. Nico got one, Hooksy yeah. had two kills. Hunter comes through the smoke, gets pipped at the post right there, and it comes down to a situation like that. So two rounds in a row, really, where G2 shouldn't have been giving up the plants. Uh, they have, so allowing FTW to stay a little bit more competitive in these early stages here. Actually, they got four kills between the two of them there, and then the round comes down into a one-on-one. -on -one. So that's pretty miserable stuff on the rotation back in from G2 Esports. But regardless, the round there, See, the like AWP save. See, hollow victories. They can't really yeah. get fired up, and they haven't really established their economy. They know there are breaking points still, and these rounds have been very close. So Nico needs to be careful. They can't just be running down Banana and challenging every single round. Needs to actually... Oh, I say that, hold on a second. Nico fancies it. He's got the smoke to cover him, though. Just trying to see if he can get any tags through. Needs to be careful. Flames, though. Made towards logs. No one to receive. But uh, slower pace from FTW. Like you mentioned, they were uh, really pushing towards Banana a lot against FaZe and trying to get towards the top, and it's been quite subdued so far. You don't mind seeing a little bit more aggression from a well, team like G2 here, but they've got to stick the landing this time around. Monacy has a chance here. here Under Porch, two AWP kills, the third knock of the land. Dodo will eventually snuff him out, but a number disadvantage situation again for FTW. They've got this top mid control. JKS has been able to dip back to the pit. He's got the sight access of Hunter here to help out as well as he lobs out some defensive utility. Now, they don't necessarily have to commit towards middle chat. They've taken vision away. The CTs don't have the crossfire established and no apps presence. There's just Hooksy alone towards B. And in terms of utility, he has a single smoke. Does he have anything in spawn? I don't think so. So this will be the last of his utility and they're actually heading their way back. This is where weaknesses can start to crop up, especially if an individual like Hooksy, I guess we could compare it to like a Zeus in Na'Vi once upon a time. You know, he had sure. to be a real weak and it would mean that the team would be chipping over and, and trying to help him out. And that's exactly what's happened here. The 2-2 spread, not unorthodox in a round like this, but Nico's here just <laughs> at the right time. Perfectly <laughs> trims KST's little hair right there, but he needs to stall them out before they plant yet again and can't find the bullets through the smoke just yet. And Dodo now the power position of Newbox with the AWP. He can't afford to die either. He can't be pushing that smoke or committing to anything more than the spam he just attempted there. But another winnable situation for FDW. These rounds are not clean from G2. Nico waits for the backup, spams towards the coffin position, but it's a better shot from Aris Dossi towards Banana. Well. And this is looking great. They've actually done fantastic work. I dare say they've won the round. Oh, JKS with a great opportunity there. Lovely shot towards Emo, but Aris Dossi with four kills in total. That's absolutely massive. And like we said, the money will be broken for G2. They can actually get back in this game now. Portuguese side looking focused and composed. Yeah, quite an easy round to piece together there. And this was with the Monacy double kill under the porch to start. He, he, Five he, on three, right? Yeah, not doing well after getting traded out. I understand he's stuck. Monacy has to go down in that situation. But as Dosse here, so in that little piece from Majil saying he's uh, one of the best aimers in Portugal. Well, putting some of that on display here to confirm the round and put FTW on the board. 
Yeah, this this B combination, it looks like Nico's got a lot of pressure to rotate in and find the, the kills required. They're not really in sync. There's no like punishing Krongle rifle here after being up 4-0. That's kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, it just shows you the nature of these rounds here. Sedodo, well, likes to get aggressive. He's going to start leering up middle. This spam from Agil could actually do some damage here. They have to consider if they want to continue to push this app's position with spam like that. And JKS is actually going to run the gauntlet here. Nope. That's always going to happen. There it is. That's always going to happen if an individual spamming like that. It's never just one clip, you know? They're always going to continue to pepper for their always default. Always nice to do with the Galil as well. you got 35 bullets in there. You can just keep spamming all round long, making sure no one has control. If you don't know what the buy is like on the other side, that's really common for a default. Yeah. We've been doing that from back in our day, yeah, right? And, I, and I'm reflecting to the, the 2007, 2008 time. day. Yeah, right? absolutely. This is over a decade ago at this point. Yeah, well over. Up. So there's the first kill, JKS. Won't be happy about that, trying to sneak past, hoping the spam was over. But uh, anything but, as uh, the Glil will find him. And Nico alone towards Banana, but he has got his signature Desert Eagle with him. Looking for the gap in the smoke. Has another smoke as well at his feet, right? Just over towards the uh, CT position there, so he can replenish this one. He might want to get on that quick smart because they're coming. Yeah, he's feeling through the pressure. This. They might have to be stalled out on this. Aristotle waiting here for the flash to come through. They're oh, actually just going to push the issue. Nico bowled over, and uh, G2 should probably look to save these upgrades. Yeah, well handled from FTW, you have to say that. They they saw their opportunity, threaded the needle, managed to get through the smoke and find that all-important kill. Very good flashbangs as well. Nico didn't stand a chance. He didn't even get a shot off. So a five on three, and you're absolutely right here. Save the MP9 to Desert Eagle. It's not the most glamorous save, but uh, one that's uh, a necessity at this point. Already has a different vibe to the phase game. It feels yeah. like G2 are going to be made to work here today, whereas phase they we... just consistently did aggressive maneuvers. Even when it wasn't working, they just kept pushing. And, exactly. But they still won 16-4. Different methodology for sure. And uh, G2, you can see they're a little bit uncomfortable for sure. sure. Even when they were 4-0 up, it seemed like we said they, they weren't smiling. They're not really fired up because they're quite hollow victories. They're just about getting it over the line each and every round. Comes down to an awkward one-on-one, -on -one, which was definitely up contention. But uh, a clean one from FTW. You haven't seen any rounds like that from G2 where they keep all five players alive. And so this is where the game really starts. And uh, it's a spam. You want to be on the right-hand side of the bridge, you're going to try it at home and you can do a lot of damage. Any aggressive CTs take boatloads. So maybe a timeout required here. We'll see. Hasn't been called yet, but uh... if you're going to see T's and you're on one of those rounds and they spam like that and you see it, don't push hold. Go to go stack somewhere enough, else. It? Roll safe. go late. Go mega late. It's a pretty good rule to have. But here we go. Oh, the grenade damage. Hunter's not accounted for. No, he is accounted for. Not yeah, not the best weapon for the job, even if he wasn't. Maybe he gets one kill there, but uh, looks here. I like that a lot. Thinking on his feet. And they know there's two there. Yeah. So maybe just hightail it towards A, boys. It's just going to be the one man of JKS. Oh, no armor, no nades. PT50 in hand. Yeah. He would have to do something ungodly at this point. Yeah. Well, if the AWP continues to run maybe in first here, Stadoto might give him a chance. Yards. He'd have a chance, but uh, if the AWP runs in first, you're dead Thank on. Thank you, Stadoto. We'll, we'll take that one. And take ooh, that. Damage onto the second, too. An extra bullet or a boost. Another one. You'd love to see it. Let's keep him funky with it. Almost denying the flat right there. Hooksy with a pep in the step, but uh, that will be the third round confirmed for FTW now. Just a one-round game here, and we will see the buy come back in for G2, but there's question marks around the AWP. There's not enough cash to get it into the hands of Monacy. He's going to have to operate with a silenced M4 here, so that should be across the board. Yeah, the financial woes continue here for G2. Haven't got comfortable on Inferno whatsoever, even after being up 4-0. Triple grenade for the start there. The DS mowing down the flanks, and uh, JKS, decent kill, but... All in vain, really. They can, of course, recover the AWP. Nothing will be saved on the G2 side. Speaking of which, no kits, Chad, no helmets. Uh, not a big deal against the AK array, but uh, banana control. Looking like it might be granted here. Nico, though, with the grenade down. I don't think it would do too much damage. This tickles the toes of DDS there. But Nico likes to spam. We know he can be precise with this, but uh, no bullets hitting this time. Yeah, they actually invested in quite a few HEs there, G2, that have now been deployed. and. Operating with a three-man stack over towards the B bomb site, kind of hoping they'll execute the antenna flash from Hooksy, ready and rearing. You'd like to use this one if you're at home, guys. It's a jump throw because you cannot hear the pin getting pulled if you're at the car position. So a nice little note on that one if Hooksy's throwing it from exactly here. Thank you, Jakey. We've got him on the one, two, three, fours, five, sixes, seven, eights, nines, and zeros. Uh, and the zeros. Especially. And the zeros. Yeah. Okay, Banana. 
Oh, it's clear at the top. It doesn't really give them the information they're looking for here as FTW are making a couple of sound cues now over towards A. Smokes, running to Bloom, pressure being felt. Jake oh, has... lots of pressure, dude. Yeah, he's having to pivot towards that mini pit position to take the headshot angle towards Arch. It's just too marooned on the site and back up it's coming, but very slowly. I don't like the look of this for G2 whatsoever. The Diaz now patrolling towards Library and Arch for rotations. He won't necessarily even have to swing around to the bomb site. They're focusing towards the apartments and quad here. Molotov in towards the pier. JKS, as you said, at that headshot position. Monacy on towards the bomb site here. They need to find multiple kills, which they have done. Man advantage and then some for G2. Three versus two. Monacy still alive on the bomb site here. JKS does go down. A lot of work still to be done, though. Back to the two on two. Bomb to be planted. No problem whatsoever. They still have a smoke and a flash. Two M4s, and remember, chat, no kits available. Okay, well, time's the biggest enemy right now. Nico is coming through this apartment's position. Currently unawares right now are FTW, but still having to find a kill. Nico on the balcony in a very, very exposed position here, and he gets spotted from sight. Takes down Aldosse. This is Sedoto in a one-on-one -on -one against Hooksy here. He's up, he's over. It's been communicated, and Hooksy's going to get the clutch. The defuse will be coming with that. He's going to grab the ult for now, but that's G2 back in winning ways. Yeah, just about, I would say, it looked like that shot was destined to hit Hooksy. He knew where he was. He had the information, but uh, Hooksy comes out on top. And again, it's a round where G2 only have one player surviving. Now on the T side, they've built out a ton of cash. They've had very clean rounds. They've actually got $8,000 per player going into round number nine here. Anything but, you've saved the orb. But it's going to be so many concessions across the board here with the M4s that, once again, probably won't have any kits. Well, one of the questions is, how many kills does this A defense have to get, right? Exactly. Is, is three enough between the two of them right there? Is, is this kind of what we should be expecting? Are we expecting two players to have a complete lockout against five? And he's playing towards B, and he probably will be aggressive this round. We flashed in. I'm sure he'll be happy with a bit more active at the start of the round. Time will tell. As they hold towards the sandbags for now, the DS smoked off, but that's allowing Nico to get a bit closer, perhaps. Nice nade towards... The balcony position, but no one there to receive it, of course. And a bit of a stalemate now. He's running the default on the FTW side, trying to get apartments control towards Boiler. Eventually smoking off towards middle, and uh, they're actually looking like they've got some pace here. With two players in apartments, Jack, suggesting might be operating a little bit quicker than I might expect. Yeah, it might be a bit poppier, right? They haven't fought for any of this banana control. Yeah, right. They've really bought the fact that they I think it's going to be a B play again. But that mega passive molly that was just run over towards Logs, surely G2 heard that sound cue. They must know. The FTW have no banana control. That but they're hedging me, their bets again. You know they at least don't have vision on the CT side. They're not looking aggressively as to what's there, but you're right. I, I, I suggest the, the JK is on an island here. It's basically a one on five. Like, Hunter's going to get in position sure now. The rotation's coming from Hooksy too. Okay, well, this pace from FTW is starting to bite them in the ass. Well, up towards quad they go. Two players towards the apartments as well. Hunter needs at least a kill here. And oh my god, where's the communication? What's happened? DS has come on spraying towards the bomb site. It's all starting to fall apart here for them. But back to a two on two. Aristotle once again, the hero of the round. They've still got 30 seconds to bomb down in an awkward spot, but a smoke down towards Motos. The Dodo. Aristotle. Up against Monacy and Nico with the MP9. And they do have a kit and one smoke, but still a very difficult round here, Chad. I don't know how they're going to break into this. Aris Dosse continues to do wonderful work once yeah. they get onto these sites here. He's getting a... multi-kills, that forcing them into a save here. That was a round as well where it looked like FTW were a little bit discombobulated. They couldn't call Hunter's position. Uh, I assumed he was Hold flashed, but uh, we're going for it. Okay, well, this is going to end one way. And Nico gets the kill towards the side. They have to deal with this pit player. If Nico pushes too far forward, he's oh, got the kill. Wait, there's one more kit near the bomb here. So if they get this kill, there's still a chance. Monacy, time is the issue right now. There's not going to be any chance for this. Already ticked way too far. He gets the kill, but needs to get out. And the new bomb radius, he I might just he lose everything here. Yeah. I'm just giving everything over. Oh, for what? That's a nightmare situation, isn't it? Now they really are in trouble. They are in a... In deep trouble, Chad. They've got, what, $2,000 per player. They've lost absolutely everything. FPW, as you mentioned, they already had a ton of cash. Unless you absolutely win that round. Oh, that wasn't a justified attempt. I'm not sure. But uh, either way, FTW in a great spot. They've got a full buy, of course. And I think if you're G2, you have to just take a full eco, it seems. Ben, and that, and that right there is a problem solution itself. would be Monacy over for a couple of rounds. He shows presence. And then you have a bit more control there. And he's more dynamic. We haven't seen that at all. Instead, they're having to send three rifles over. The A attack comes in. And scrappy retakes are being attempted. Let's move Monacy around. Let's see if we can actually get him active towards B. You never love to have to defend A with one or two players. Always out of position. And Nico again with some banana aggression. Yes, yeah, so that's where the orc can be the solution, in my opinion, especially towards B. Establish the control. They're getting the early control. The T's are gifting it to them. Like we saw, they're doing those passive Molotovs. You get an orc like at the, at the top there, or even a player on the half wall just playing for a defensive um, hold up. But uh, 
Yeah, it's not pretty from G2 so far. I'm curious if this plays into the prep that they did, right? If in the demos they watched for FTW said, hey, we're going to approach the game like this, or if they were really just wanting to bolster that B defense so Hooksy doesn't get exploited on that side, right? Because that could have been a go-to. But either way, oh, has it worked out oh. for them here? Hunter saw something, took a shot, Good gives attempt. up a boost. And now your best bet would just be to regather and try and execute towards B. Again, no real map control for G2. Mid is a mystery. They, they know that something was there, but how many, who knows? Top Banana, they, they've just heard a Molotov get thrown out towards Sandbag. So they have no vision towards Banana, no vision towards middle, and it's just another gamble stack here, hoping for the best. And it's looking likely to actually be a mid attack once again, where JKS all on his lonesome once more. Five, seven, and armor. It's a good bomb site to play pit with an M4 and a smoke. Hold up. They go. They're doing him a favor. They yeah. come back to B with 20 seconds. They have to commit B right now. This stack could pay off here. Hooksy has a flash at the ready. There is a player going towards CT spawn, but you're right. Time is of the essence here. They can't mess around. And the CTs, there was an opportunity to try and get around back in their favor. Hunter's position. This could be the one. The bomb gets dropped here. Can he find the second? Hooksy absolutely can. Hooksy's done it all. He absolutely has you right and it's just a deal with ct spawn no time and it will be the round in favor of g2 they run into the full stack finally getting a bit of luck in their favor g2 didn't necessarily have the information they were coming towards b but it worked out in the end that's absolutely fantastic for them the four spy works a bit like roulette right you can, you can yeah they're betting on red every single time and eventually it comes through for them but uh it all starts with that kill towards nika that was a five and four bear in mind as well i love the boost there coming in from Hunter manages to take the aggro away and Hooksy with the 5-7 just mowing them down. Great work from him. And uh, we get into the next round. There is by left. Could, be, could become his signature weapon for old Hooksy there, the 5-7. Yeah, he it? has been could getting a few gun. good sequences of that. Wow, this is the chance now for G2 to break FTW back. We were getting excited, but that was meant to be uh, more of a gimme with the circumstances that presented themselves in that round. So unless FTW can scrape something back with very little here, G2 can get that confidence they've been lacking. And there you go. You go. wanted the AWP towards B. They have the and full vision. And it makes vision. a lot more sense. And now you can actually have a solid A defense instead of two players trying to hold a crossfire against four. Okay, well, Nico now starting to head back around See, the world he's here. now Monacy's alone. It makes so much more sense. And he has full information. He'll be safe. There's no one to challenge him. It's just looking much better. Four rifles. Well, make it three and a half rifles. The pound for pound best gun of the game. The uh, MP9 in the hands of Absolutely here. agree. It's wild how good that gun can be. They should have everything they need and more to lock this down. The biggest problem right now is Stododo's flashbangs. He has two of them. He could flash Monacy back off the line, but still has a full belt of utility of his own. Takes a very brave re-peek on the jiggle. Sendry deep, it's forcing them in towards A. JK has will spot one AK coming up short now, and Jill would love to find ahead. Nico tunneling in towards the site. This one should be good as gold for G2. The flash comes over. They start to waterfall out. The first is handled. Hooksy's taken down Sedoto through the smoke as well, and this one's petering out. Yeah, I think you might be right. This is looking much cleaner from G2. A setup where you're actually ready. You can take educated guesses as to where they're coming because you're gaining information. You haven't lost everything, as in banana, as in towards middle, and you're having to take gambles. Like the operative word, gambling. You're the you're the favorite going into this one. You shouldn't be having to take gambles in the gun rounds. You should be like hunting for that information, be happy to take some challenges, and uh, that's much better. I will say the Hooksy 5-7 round on B might be the changing of the air in the entire best I of think three. Might because be right. if they're able to clean up this half now, go 11 to 4. They would have been in a dire straits if they had lost that round. They would have been in an awful position, a woeful one, because that was their full investment at break point. Right? Should have been six rounds for FTW Absolutely. after that conversion. Yep. Oh, looks like a Hail Mary B rush here. Hooksy and Nico. This is your chance. The Util oh, damage. Great. It looks schmick as Nico's going to dip on out with the AK 47. Grab him a couple of kills too. But the assists, they look nice for Hooksy as it's just a dodo. One man, one Glock. And no time as Hunter from the flank will get him done and dusted. See, and with Manasi, like, oh, sorry, Monacy showing his presence there towards Banana, they may be hoping he'd be there again. But that's why he's staying dynamic and moving around. And now it's difficult to keep track of him. This is where things get interesting. And hopefully. He can continue that going forward. He has another B spawn again here, Henry. So maybe yeah. exactly that. He can True. pick up this orb, scoop quickly over towards the B site. They can throw the one-way smoke, a bunch of flashes for him. He can take some fights. And he's heading straight towards B here. So this is good. The mobile orb are now in play, and you want to set this kid up. We've been asking for some moments yep. from him. Currently, the, the fourth highest rated player, I guess the second lowest rated player for G2. And here he is, swinging straight out. Not going to actually take the fight. Normally you'd see that aggression coming through, but this onslaught up banana. hooksy has been peppered down to 11. Nico taking heads on Aristose over the top. And there you go. The vice slams shut. And another round, unless we can see a 3v5 conversion back towards A. Now it's coming together. Now it's looking like a proper CT half. Monacy can rotate back towards library. He's got arch control. 
The aforementioned crossfire towards A of Hunter and JKS. They'll be comfortable as you like, knowing Arch is covered now. You haven't got JKS having to watch towards Libby from headshot. He can actually play his position in an effective manner. You can see this lovely little angle here. He should be granted a kill. Mr. Dodo is looking like he is not done with this round just yet. He is now. Obviously, will be dropped. And Hunter, <gasps> they checked his position, but not fully. So the bomb will go down. Still a minute to work with here. The KST cannot do anything with it. And uh, G2 extending their lead to 9 4 here. Round 14. And I dare say a partial buy for FTW. They don't have much to work with here. And it will be a timeout regardless to the woods. So they'll be sending three players towards second mid. Bomb will be waiting up in the T apartments here. And uh, nothing too quick by the looks of things. No banana presence at all. So maybe another hop set up here. But Hunter will get flashed in towards middle. Doesn't spot anything, but just dropping the incendiary just to buy some time for the rotation now. Well, this is the first wave of Util here. So hoping to, to garner a little bit of control here or bait out Util. They've definitely baited out a little bit as the smoke to deny the apartment's pop. Multiple members looking to team on through. They're going to drop a smoke of their own design here. JKS on notice now and Hunter in the okay. graveyard. This could have been a potent combo, but that nade is beautiful. The Hadouken onto JKS and now the flashes yeah. are beautiful too. They're in. They might be snatching one away here. You might not even justify attempting this one. We'll see. You've got Monacy who's incredibly low down at 37 points of health. It was a pop flash attack there and we'll have a boost in towards the bomb side and see what's available, but... It's not looking good. Nico will have to find a couple of kills quickly. Good incendiary to flush one of them out, though. That's uh, a guaranteed kill if you ask me. Maybe against Nico, the flames that actually come out on top there, but it's going to be Monacy has dropped in the interim. And what is going on here, Chad? That's the round over. Hooksy won't be winning this, and that's a little bit of a disappointing one. Great work from FTW. Don't get me wrong. They managed to thread the needle, get up there. As you see, he's rotating, but it's way too clean. Yeah, I think clumsy is probably a key word for some of these G2 rounds that we've seen. It just, just hasn't felt like everybody's been on the same page of approach that's been required. And that setup I agree. would traditionally be a very strong setup against an apps pop and a short push. But the nades onto JKS were immaculate. Look at this. Uh, the nade usage has been on point for FTW. You've seen them bombard the top of Banana as well. And then Hunter just getting caught off guard by those flashes. So they just got absolutely dismantled there. And G2 still can get the double digits. <laughs> the tactical airstrike toward the pair was glorious. Three of them landing on his doorstep. But uh, can they close things out? Can they deny double digits here for G2? Nico will flash himself in. It's decent. He wants another go at it, though. Not falling back here. Will this be to his detriment? I'm not sure. So far, so good. Good grenade towards the half-wide. I think he's committed now. He'll get one more. Absolutely fine. We'll be dropped to the flames in the end, but now just Hooksy alone. Is this where they pull the trigger and try and break through? It will cause a rotation nonetheless, so Hunter will have to come over towards the B bomb site, but uh, a four-on-three in favor of G2. Want to see on the M4 this time, and he's actually got to play a boosted above him in the form of JKS. Yeah, and KST's barrel's been spotted, I think. Monacy is very hyper aware of this boiler play, so if you're going to get both kills as KST, you're going to have to pull off something otherworldly does have the chance to try and rumble things, and his presence is at least giving these banana players a, a little bit of confidence they can sell a bit of a fake. So you two, both sides of the map right now. Might be able to piece this together that there are two G2 members. As the setup has changed. JK has up on the balcony, but hold the phone. KST did find a bit of a timing for that fight. Unable to confirm the kill. JKS needs to get one and a half kills here just to be safe. They're taking down cleanly, which it is a bit of a pre-fire these days. We'll see how it goes for him. Lovely stuff. And uh, that should be the round and indeed the half. Just one more player to find. JKS should be able to do it. And there it is. Double digits for G. There's definitely some work to be done here. And we're getting to see that work live in front of everybody's screen during SL Pro League Season 16. Yes, indeed. Well, Sudodo looking to get things done early here. Just spotting for a bit of information here. But a nice Very little safe. The door. Yeah. I don't think you could do this much safer than that. that, that would, <laughs> it would maybe be not peaking the angle. But they have a lot of util, right? So you can understand why they want to be so safe. So many smokes. Three smokes, two mollies, flashes in the mix as well. So a heavy utility investment here from G2. What is the plan going to be with the finish? Looks likely to be B, I would say. They've got three smokes and two molotovs. So yeah, they want to make sure they're dotting their eyes, crossing their T's, and uh, having the full execute here. That's a smoke towards Coffins. I'm sure you'll see one towards the spawn area as well. And indeed a Molotov towards new boxes and emo. This is looking very efficient, chat, but can they find the all-important kills? JKS opens things up. To TS, though, he's been given so much time. He will be shut down eventually, and uh, they swarm the bombs. are looking very comfortable for now. All the time in the world to plant. KST would have to get very lucky to try and deny that, but nothing can be done, and the retake begins. Now, they do have a kit. 
A four versus three, and G2 haven't exactly been cleaning these sort of rounds. Well, one of the keys right there is JKS replenishing that CT smoke. That might be right. enough here to make them save, right? That's an extra 20 seconds of gray screen with the bomb getting planted. That takes you to halfway gone. You mentioned the fact the kit's there, sure, but it would have given them one avenue. Coming in through the ruins position, maybe trying a Hail Mary boost, risking it as a team pushing through the smoke. But we've already seen multiple times throughout this event where teams save on the CT side after they have conceded the right. pistol in this situation, hold on to this Kevlar, and then get themselves into a FAMAS or something quite tidy into the next round of play and be competitive here. So FTW looking to take a page out of Twist Strap Book. And we heard from them, a lot of this is about experience. They don't feel ready for the event of this scale. Well, if they were paying attention to the phase game, maybe that's where they got this little idea from just to hold on to their Kevlar vests. Yeah, it does make sense, especially if you'll be buying into the next round. The fact you've got Diffuse Kit, a couple of Kevlars in there, uh, especially if you've got 100 armor as well, you can actually upgrade to a helmet and the MP9. Um, we'll see which way they're inclined as we will Ooh, take a little time out. That's a tech home. issue. Anybody who... Their buy looks actually pretty potent. The yeah, going to find himself with a Famas, a Scout for Stedodo, Deagles, CZ, some Util, and the first shot rains out. They can start piecing this puzzle together, G2. As soon as you see the Scout, you're going to definitely be expecting the Force Buy behind it. Yeah, the Scout can be very powerful indeed on Inferno. The DS with the HE grenades, something else that could be a bit problematic. Drop those towards a half four. I dare say they do a little bit of damage. Actually, nothing at all. I don't know how they negated that, but uh, two boosts towards B. One on new boxes, one towards CT spawn. A player to Hooks suggest is just a normal setup. And Hooks here with the MAC-10. He has been very good at this weapon. Nothing found here, though. No trade potential. He does call this two towards CT spawn, but I don't think they'll yeah, be expecting a third. Yeah, it's Henry. It's it very bad, bad info. You're right. And, and there's a gap in the CT too. smoke as well. So this is actually hard to watch right now. Hang on. Is he still boosted? They'll win the round, but it looks of things. Sedodo on the scouts. Uh, JPS quite far removed there. Might just want to pump the brakes for a second we'll and work out. A. Go back to A. Go back to A. Great, that's a great boys. shout. Get over there. Have a yeah, good time. We we'll go A. You All know, right. JKS already killed the guy. He's going to find maybe an MP9. I don't think it's available. They were both towards CD spawn and new boxes, I believe. So if he had anything other than the scout, I'd actually give him a chance here. Hold on. 3B was almost there for him. Monacy will take him down, but still it's... These rounds, Chad, they, they don't seem too convincing. And like you said, let's be fair. They've got two new players and they've played one tournament so far. One and a half tournaments to through this one. There's going to be some holes in their game. But this is sort of fundamental stuff that's falling down right from like playing against pistols, bad information, sending players in. It's just like very clumsy each and every time. There's no clean rounds, it feels like, for G2. So I think, like, if you talk this through, you know, it's, it's very easy to explain how that's all just unfolded, right? So they've gone, uh, co contact Banana, Hooksy's had a decent pace to him. He's been ahead of the smoke, so he's gone, well, I'm ahead of the smoke, I might as well hold this info. They've thrown the CT smoke, which is meant to work in his favor, but there was a gap in the smoke, and there was a player on the boost. <laughs> And then they get the info, there's two players spawned, so Nico runs into trade, right, thinking he's doing the... Oh, that's nice, okay. all right. All has been redeemed, you but know. Forget everything I was saying. Yeah, don't worry Give about that. Give us some that. more MAC-10 highlights. That was lovely. This is everybody's favorite weapon. Okay. All right, there's the ace. Nico's enjoying himself. Yeah, forget all that. Yeah, right, we'll stop talking now. It, Just headshot. He's had enough. Headshotting <laughs> and such. It's a simple game when you break it down like that. Shoot the bad guys, win the round. Run into the choke point, shoot them all in the face, get it done, move on to the next round. That's more like it, but that was a Felico, of course. We're having some fun here, and it will be round 19, the first real gun round of this second half, 13 to 5. Again, G2 won't drop this map, they'll continue their clean streak. It's just uh, it's not been quite as clean as they would like, I suppose. Well, I think it's because the expectation is with a name like G2 and the names in the oh, roster yeah. for them to be like a superstar world-class team. And there's no reason that they can't ascend to that. But as we mentioned, it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Nico looking to cause more chaos here with the MAC-10. Flashbang's in, trying to bait out the utility on the CT side. They don't necessarily have to commit, but uh, they'd be happy to throw those MAC-10s in first with a nice little execution there. They've got four players towards Banana. JKS lurking once again towards Apartments. It always makes me anxious when I see players round the corner with a pin nade in their hand, right? right. It's like, jeez. It's a, it's a big in-game leader thing. You see it with a lot with in-game leaders. I, I wouldn't care to count the amount of times I died rounding a corner with a nade in my hand because I expected something to be covered that wasn't. That's just the focus of like rotating around, wanting to help your teammates. One of the biggest things with low fragging in-game leaders, and I can tell you from personal experience here, everybody playing at home, <laughs> is you, you need to focus on your crosshair, right? You need to have the theory down pat. You still need to be able to call in the mid-round, but 
And this is the hardest thing to do. You need to make sure that you are focusing on that crosshair because if you're not contributing in the fragging department and you're a liability, it's some big issues here. The hook seat leading the charge. These Mac 10s starting to pressure in. That corner is one. Aristotle will get a single kill and Hunter with the immediate trade. They just need to deal with the DS now over towards the coffin position and the smoke is starting to fade. Oh, 30 seconds gone. left. Are they He's watching not being it? covered. The bomb's going to get dropped here. Honestly, we'll find the frag from the coffin position, but JKS is still on this lurk, completely removed from the whole scenario here. He's way too late to the party. Yeah. Honestly, dinked on down, and there's some big issues right now. Yeah, this could actually all fall apart. They'll have to go for another scrappy plan, and you can see the grenades raining in. Where is JKS? Ten seconds. He needs to start making some incisions here. Good shot. Needs a lot more that came from, though, and KST is aware of his position. I don't think they've got time. Well, there it is. Jill will make himself known, and there was enough time for the plan, but it was still scrappy as you like. Panic stations all over the place towards the end of the round. But maybe they're adopting a little bit more of this outsider's playstyle there. And JKS, under the pump, under the pressure, right? He gets the two kills required. It did look a little bit late, but <laughs> they still had the roller blades on coming around to see D spawn. Yeah, Wasn't well. wasting any time there. This is the thing. The, the score line, with how with how the critique sounds, right? It sounds like the game is probably 14 11 <laughs> yeah, right, right now, but they're the score still, line is 14 they're still to 5. Winning. Uh, and then some for sure. But uh, you're right, this is for map points. And uh, we will see just Desert Eagles and Kevlar, entry level Kevlar. Yeah. To be fair, and, and also this is just the nature of this matchup. Moxie, what are you walking up and down with you? I know you're anti flush, but you, you didn't even have your gun out. You had an aid in your hand, and, and, and now they've just flushed past you. And now they've gotten two kills. I like to keep it interesting, Chad, you know? But this is where I was going to go. There's there's no winning in this series for G2. They're expected to win, and if they do anything that isn't perfect, then that's a loss. So it's it, there is a lot to watch in the demo there. Like Hooksy walking up banana with a Molotov in his hand, back turned. The back turned, I don't mind. The anti flash, but the Molotov in the hand. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, true. It's a good point. He's on, he's on his own. He's, he's the, the only is, player well, up there. With these mistakes, because they can still win the rounds, they have world-class talent in terms of fraggers in their team, so any mistakes can be made up for, and that's why it's difficult to really criticize my support in this sort of uh, instance, because, yes, they've got a 15-5 scoreline, but as you watch the game, short from the scoreboard, and HL TV, it looks like, oh, they absolutely trounced him, which they have, but... I guess against top tier opposition, like some of these so mistakes won't do. They'll cost you. They will cost you. cost you. Exactly. That's our point. That's all we're saying. And if anything, I think most people want to see G2 doing quite well, right? Because we yeah. currently live in an era where FaZe and Na'Vi are the talk of the town. It's about how many names can join them at the top of the tree because we'd love to have this top 10 where any given Sunday, anybody can beat anybody. They're constantly biffing. We go into a playoff bracket of the Rio Major. We have no idea who's going to win. Imagine that. That would be great. Now, I think Vitality are close to throwing their hat into the ring. I think By so too. Virtue of having Zywu already gets you close to the ring, but now yeah. having Sphinx and you got that Wombo combo with the experience of Dupree Magis, multi-major winners in their own right, Apex as well. You yeah. bring him into the conversation. Zonic is the coach. Okay, now we're excited about Vitality. They just went 5-0 in the group last week as well. So, uh, yeah, I think you're you're dead on. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do going forward. So, let's add G... Like, if G2 can ascend to that level, we still haven't seen Cloud9 play this True. season or a retooled Ents. Yep. Right? Think that we still have Heroic to come. There's so much Counter-Strike still to watch during Pro League. So, a lot of exciting storylines to develop here before the RMR. But, honestly, this is what you want to see in the thick of things. We've been asking for some action. Well, he'll get some. Get now to the DS. Just a single frag, but still an advantage towards G2, I would say. Harris Dossi down to 35 points of health, four and four. Bomb and T spawn, but all four players of G2 towards Banana for now. Just gonna try and gain full control here, make sure CTs don't have any info on this side of the map. They have two players in pretty standard positions towards coffins and new boxes. This is a good call though. Just execute BIOS for opening down. exchange. There's likely only gonna be two players here, right? It's very unlikely to expect the CTs to split up in anything more than a 2-2 split unless they want to gamble. And they're actually going to double here back towards the new box. So entry flash lined up from JKS. There's a molly towards the new box available here as well. It's going to have to be an extinguish. And there it is. So behind the smoke, they'll deal with one. But will they expect the second player of Dadeus here? He can be the hero of this round. Good job. Hoxie. Good job. Pop and bucket out. Cleans up the site single-handedly. And that should be the game. Could be overlooked most of the time. And uh, that's when things can really fall apart. But I think you might be right here. 15 to 5. And uh, four versus one, KST will have absolutely zero chance here. And sure, it's a 16-5 scoreline, but uh, definitely a, a few issues for G2, but overall, a pretty decent game, all things considered.